Hello everyone. Welcome to Tutorials Point. Now, after having studied about different structure and functions of vascular tissues, xylem and phloem, let us now study the types of xylem and phloem. So, the learning objectives will be to explain different types of xylem as well as phloem based on their origin and position. Okay, so all of us know that the basic structure of xylem and phloem is such that they occur in the form of bundles, wherein the phloem lies outside towards the stem and xylem is in depth in inward side. So this was all about the structure. Now there are different types of xylems and different types of phloems based on from where are they originating and based on where are they located in the stem or the root or the leaf. So let us just see different types of xylem. So first primary and secondary xylem. Now primary as the word is suggesting all of us know that all the tissues have originated from meristematic tissues and the meristematic tissues based on their origin were of two types the primary meristem and the secondary meristem. So that xylem which originates from the primary meristem is known as primary xylem and what was the name of the primary meristem it was procambium so both the xylem and the phloem tissues which originate from primary meristem that is the procambium are known as primary xylem or primary phloem next where is the primary xylem generally found we all have studied that the apical meristem is included in the primary meristem in the primary xylem now xylem and phloem which is secondary secondary means again it is originating from the secondary meristem. Now secondary meristem was later formed meristem which was responsible for increase in girth of the plant. So later the type of xylem which is formed is known as secondary xylem. Clearly you can see in this diagram the growth apices have a primary phloem and a primary xylem which is the meristematic area and here laterally or in the lateral area or on the sides the type of meristem which is found is secondary meristem or the lateral meristem and it is of two types the core cambium and the vascular cambium so here the uh, meristematic tissue which is present is procambium which forms primary xylem primary phloem and here it's vascular cambium which is forming secondary xylem and secondary phloem this is the young stem and this is the mature stem now next type of xylem is protoxylem and metaxylem. Now let us see why it is called protoxylem and why it is called metaxylem. So this is on the basis of time of origin. So these xylems differ in their structure as well as in their function. So some cells are present in one particular type of xylem, some cells are absent in other xylem. Why is this happening? This is because of the time of origin. So protoxylem is the proto word means first and xylem means we know wood. So first formed wood is protoxylem. They are generally smaller cells. Si their size is small. Now in these cells what happens is all of us know that lignification is present and generally the tissues in the xylem are dead. So in this case lignification occurs before the completion of elongation. So as the vessels and tracheids elongate, they are lignified. So before they elongate to a particular length, first their lignification is complete. Now the cells which are present in protoxylem are tracheids, vessels and generally xylem parenchyma. Now in these types of tissues, what is happening is primitive type of thickening is present. So we have all of us have learned that the tracheids and the vessels have thickening in them. The thickening can be annular, spiral, scaliform, reticulate and pitted. So here the thickening is annular that is in the form of rings and spiral that is in the, in the form of rings like this and spiral is like this. So this type of thickening is present in protoxylum. Now meta xylem, meta word means after and xylem again means wood. So later formed xylem is meta xylem. Now in this xylem also some cells are more and some are less. But here what is important is that the lignification of the cells, it takes place after completion of elongation. So when the cell has elongated to a particular length, then lignin deposition will happen in them. Now, in them, the tracheids and the vessels are comparatively broader and larger in size. Here, the tracheids and the vessels are narrower and shorter in case of protoxylem. And metaxylem, they are larger and bigger and broader in size. 
Now thickenings present are new thickenings, are not remote or primitive thickenings, they are comparatively new thickenings. These type of thickenings are scariform thickening, pitted thickening and also reticulate thickening. So these three types of thickenings are present in metaxylem. Now the metaxylem cells are comparatively bigger in size. We will see in this diagram. So clearly you can see the protoxylem cells are smaller in size, right? And the metaxylem cells are comparatively bigger in size. Now, if we see the development, all of us know that they develop from meristematic tissues. So, procambium is the meristematic tissue and the vascular cambium is the meristematic tissue which forms primary xylem and secondary xylem. Now, this primary xylem and secondary xylem is forming vessels and tracheids. So, protoxylem based on the position, protoxylem based on the origin, protoxylem means young xylem and meta means old xylem and metaxylem means young xylem. So, Clearly you can see these are the procambial cells and all the four cells are developed from the procambial cells only which are meristematic cells and phloem cells also develop from these meristematic cells. Now the vessels and the tracheids in combination together are known as tracheary elements. This is to be remembered that vessels are also called trachea and both the elements together are called tracheary elements. Now, based on the relative position of protoxylem and metaxylem. So where is the protoxylem located? Where is the metaxylem located? Again, the xylem has been divided into different categories. So these categories are exarch condition, endarch condition, exarch condition and mesarch condition. Now what is first endarch condition? Now in the endarch condition, the protoxylem will lie towards the center. So if this is the cambium, then the protoxylem will be pushed towards the inside and inside will have protoxylem and outside will have metaxylem. So growth will be from outside to inside. Okay, did you understand? Protoxylem lies towards the center and metaxylem lies towards the periphery. So if this small cell is protoxylem, this bigger cell is metaxylem. So this is how the growth occurs in endarch condition. It involves development of protoxylem from the innermost cambial cells. So the innermost cambial cells are forming protoxylem and as the protoxylem is becoming young, it is being converted into metaxylem. From inside to outside, the growth is happening. The development is inward to outward. Hence, the protoxylem is found inside the metaxylem. Now this condition is a characteristic feature of stem. So stem tissues will have endarch condition. Next is exarch. In exarch condition, protoxylem will be towards periphery. So what will happen is now the innermost cells are not developing the protoxylem, the outer cells are developing protoxylem. So if this is the cambium, then protoxylem will lie towards periphery and the growth will be from outside to inside. The metaxylem cells will be inside and the protoxylem cells will be outside. So exarch has protoxylem towards periphery and metaxylem towards center. It involves development from outermost procambial cells, right? And how is the growth happening? From outside to inside. Here it was from inside to outside, all right? Now, this particular condition is specially found in roots. So, exarch condition is found where? In roots. Now, the next condition is mesarch condition. In mesarch condition, the protoxylem will be present in the center. So, it will be like this. This is metaxylem surrounding the protoxylem. So protoxylem in the center and metaxylem towards outside. Clearly you can see in the diagram the A condition is the exarch condition. In the exarch condition protoxylem is towards periphery, metaxylem is in center. In endarch protoxylem is in center, metaxylem is outside. And in mesarch protoxylem is in center, metaxylem is surrounding the protoxylem. Here in this diagram also development of endarch condition from center to outwards and here from outwards to center. The smaller cells are protoxylem, the bigger cells are metaxylem cells. Similarly is the protofloem and metafloem. Development is from procambial strands only. They also develop from procambium cells. The, in the protofloem, it will be newly formed phloem, right? So protofloem will be newly formed phloem. In these also differences will be in cells. So here sieve tubes stretch. They are stretching in this type of phloem. So the sieve tubes are stretching and becoming functional. 
here they are already stretched so they are bigger okay the sieve elements here the sieve element that is individual cells which join together to form sieve tube here they are smaller in protofloem they are smaller whereas in metafloem they are bigger in size now the protofloem gets crushed as the plant grows the protofloem has a tendency to gets crushed that is why it is short lived and it becomes non functional when the plant matures now in this case phloem fibers are present but in metafloem how is it different it is developing from vascular cambium and metafloem is later formed phloem so here the sieve cells will be comparatively bigger in size and also it is not found generally in those plants which are showing secondary growth right so generally in monocots you will not find you will find metafloem as the main conducting tissue and protofloem will get crushed in them and the sieve elements are longer and wider and metafloem has fibers or does not have fibers so it necessarily might not have fibers so this is the protofloem this is the metafloem these are the procambial cells which are forming protofloem and metafloem so to summarize we can say that the xylem which develops from primary meristem is primary xylem which develops from secondary meristem is secondary xylem and depending on the time of origin they are of two types protoxylem and metaxylem protoxylem is first formed xylem and metaxylem is later formed xylem on the basis of position of protoxylem and metafloem metaxylem they are further divided into exarch endarch and mesarch endarch means protofloem towards cent protoxylem towards center and mesarch means protoxylem in center metaxylem surrounding and exarch means proto protoxylem is towards outside and metaxylem is towards center all right and then now protofloem and metafloem also will depend on later formed and new formed phloem so this was all about different types of xylem and phloem in the upcoming videos let us now study about the secretory tissues till then thank you tutorialspoint.com simply easy learning